beach. Today we're on something different. We've headed down the local surf beach. We're gonna try a chance for a few Taylor. Some herring, maybe a mulloway, probably some salmon hopefully. And right now we're up in the viewing platform. Just having a look out of the ocean. We're trying to decide where we're gonna fish. And looking right there in between those two waves that are breaking appears to be the best looking gutter. So the gutter is the deepest point along the beach, or one of the deeper points along the beach. And as you can tell, with those waves forming on the left and the right hand side, that means that it's shallower further out. There's a deeper hole where this wave isn't forming in the middle. That means we've got more water for the predators to sit in. It's a little bit calmer for the bait fish to hold up in. And the predators will shoot into the into the bloody uh, into the gutter and feed on the herring and the whiting and whatnot. So we're gonna head down to that spot there, I reckon. It's gonna be our best chance. And we'll start a nice burly trail and get some baits out and a bit of a nice easterly morning. So it's a bit cold, but there's worse places to be, that's for sure. So we'll get into it now and uh, I'll show you guys all the tips, the tricks, the rigs, the baits, you know, what I do to hopefully increase my chances of catching a few fish. So let's get into it. All right, we're greeted with some pretty nice conditions this morning. The swell's quite low. The wind's easterly, so it's coming over my back. Nice to meet you to cast into, or cast out with. We're fishing a rising tide. So the tide is gonna peak at its highest at about 11 a.m. So we'll fish that sunrise. Give me a first light at the moment. Find my bait as far as I can out the back. I'll fish another one in closer. And I'll flick the little rod around and try and get a few herring and whiting and things like that as well. So uh, I'll get set up, we'll get the baits in the water, get the belly in the water, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got, a, we've got a couple of baits out. One on the uh, Shimano Spheros 5000 and the Shimano Makuro 2 beach rod. That's right out the back as far as we've cast. Then we've got the Daiwa Revros reel. I think it is, yep, yeah, in the 5000 and the Gamoku Surf 9 foot rod. That one's in a little bit closer. Now we're gonna deploy the burley. Bunch of cube muleys and mule, an old muleys and uh, an old fish head. So we just want that in the surf. And I'll bring my other rod holder down and I'll attach that around that. And that'll just get washed around in the surf. Releasing smell hopefully attracting the fish. I'll also continue to throw cubes out as well. We're still on. There's a bit of weight it's sitting just at the back there. Doesn't really feel like a big fish. I think it may be a bloody stingray. But it's also not really fighting like a stingray. It's on the surface just there. Just gonna try and keep it clear of that line, if I can. the beach a bit try and guide it down this way but it's doing what it wants I'm gonna say it's a little stingray but Now you'll notice I haven't got my drag crazy tight. Yeah, it's a little ray. We'll just wash him up.
wait for that next wave. Little little grey stingray. We'll use that wave. These things have got some serious spines on their tail. And they're not fun to deal with. So, we'll open the bail arm. We'll grab the pliers and uh, oh, we'll sort him out. You see that tail whipping about with what, at least two spines on it. Of fun for the morning not the desired species now these guys have got crazy reach with that tail Suck. That is snapped. All right, let's get him back. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know, buddy. It's not nice. <laughs> Got my shoes wet. Off he goes. That next wave will grab him. Oh. See ya, bud. Whew. All right. Let's sort this mess out and get back to it. Flyers work well. Cool, so that was the first bit of action for the morning, not what we were after. Lovely little grey stingray. They are actually protected species. Them and the smooth, the black smooth cow ray, I think they're called. Both the black and the grey are protected. So get the hooks out and get them back as safely as possible. I'm gonna check my other bait now and then I'll show you the rig I've got set up on that rod. When I check the bait on the big rod again, I'll show you the setup I got on that and uh, Hopefully then we'll get the little rod in and catch some whiting and some herring. That burley should be working nicely now. Hopefully we can get some tailor and maybe a salmon. Something with scales rather than uh, flappy wings. Alrighty, so this rig's pretty basic. Freeway crane swivel. Down to about 60 centimeters of 60 pound mono, black magic. I got three 5.0 snelled. A muley. Just start at the base of the tail. Put your first hook through. And it should line up nicely if you go through the backbone. But your top hook ends up through the snout of the, the muley. Now, a problem that we have with muleys is they're quite a soft bait. When you cast them out, they'll pull off the hooks. Or little fish will just pick in a bit. So this stuff here, the Black Magic Bait Buddy. Used to be called ghost cotton back in the day, and it's fantastic 
but it's wrapping around your muley while it's on your hooks. And what this does, you don't have to go too many, just enough. That keeps that bait on your hooks. Also helps to stop the pickers from being able to rip it off the hook straight away. Comes in real handy. From there, we've got about 80 centimeters down to a gra grapple sinker. These things are fantastic for surf beaches. They cast out, the spikes land in the sand, they keep your bait in the area you want it to be. It doesn't get washed down the beach all the time. And then once you're ready to wind it in or if a fish grabs your line and takes off, these just fold back and that sinker acts like a normal, normal snapper lead and just comes straight back in. Absolutely brilliant for surf fishing, must have. The rig on the other rod, similar, but slightly different. I'll run you through that as well. So let's get this one out. Beautiful. Just on the back of that sandbar. Take the drag off. Fingers crossed, that rod buckles up and we get a nice fish. All right, over to the little rod. So if you're just chasing a feeder, herring and, and whiting, those sorts of things, a little pattern off the rig like this for the beach is absolutely perfect. Little sinker, I use a little spoon sinker, use a star sinker or a little snapper lead. Two easy dropper loops. I use a little bit of Lumo tube and a Lumo bead. This just helps for the fish to find it in the surf. And also if you lose your bait, a lot of the times when you're winding in, things like herring and little salmon and that will think that is a little bait fish themselves and will eat a bare hook. So we'll get that bait up with a couple pieces of muley. See if we can't catch a few, uh, few fresh baits. So as I said, this rig here was pretty similar to the other one. A couple of slight differences. One, we got a smaller trailing hook. That's just from where at the back is any tailor. Hopefully they'll smash it. And a couple of circles, which actually came in quite handy with that stingray because it was lip hooked and it was easier to get off. Same way we rig it. Bit of ghost cotton. Now with this one, I like to make sure that that rear hook is predominant. Not only predominant, but also secured well. This is the sinkers on a running easy rig. That way if a mulloway grabs it, it hopefully won't feel as much pressure from the uh, sinker and it will engulf the bait rather than get scared. Same thing, another grapple sinker. But with this one, we've got the IMP clip on it. Now what this does is this attaches to your bottom hook like so. So when you cast, you cast as one, you get a much better cast, your baits don't fight each other in the air. And then when it hits the water, that flips up, separates, and you're in. So we'll get that on. So when you rig it up, you wanna make sure that your sinker trace is slightly longer than your hook trace, just to allow that to happen. If it was the other way around, it wouldn't work. Tip wrap. So they traveled out together, they'll hit the water and separate. Sink is embedded in the in the sand, drag set, we're good to go. So that's, this microphone is starting to piss me off. That's the two different rigs we're fishing. Very similar, but they are slightly different. Both work really well. That one's a little bit more fancy, I suppose you could call it, but essentially does the same thing. If the fish are hungry and they're gonna hit your bait, doesn't really matter that much. 
I like that rig just for the extra casting distance with that IMP clip. I think they work really well and they're worth the investment. Especially when it's a, a windy sou'wester and you're trying to punch a bait out into the wind, those things, they make it so much better. With the wind behind us like it is this morning and a nice calm sea, we're not having to cast that far. It doesn't really matter too much, but still always helpful. There's a bit of action on the surface out there. I think it's just currents. It looks like it's a, a rip. It's coming out the back of this gutter. But uh, hopefully it's a school of fish or something like that. And we can catch a few things because it's a bit quiet this morning. But we'll keep persisting. All right, we're actually onto a fish. Good fish too. Now I'm gonna try and get this bloody GoPro on my head. So bear with me for a second. very disappointing. Was too busy trying to get the GoPro on my head so I could show you guys what was going on with that fight. Gave that fish too many opportunities with a bit of slack line and he got off and I'm pretty certain the way he was fighting that was a mull away. Decent amount of weight, some really good solid head shakes from the surf. It was the characteristics of a nice mull away and uh, that would have been perfect this morning. Would have absolutely made my day but uh, well, that's fishing. I'll try and be more prepared, keep the GoPro uh, on my head, and we'll keep persisting for a little while longer. It's helped boost the morale because it's been quiet this morning. That one stingray, and I'm getting lots of little bites from the little fish, but I just can't get the hook in them. They must be either really small brim or really small whiting, but I um, haven't seen a herring yet. I've been burling pretty heavily, but we'll keep persisting. I mean, it's a beautiful morning. Cold, but you know, that's the price you pay. We'll be in a bit of paradise for a while, but we'll keep going. And fingers crossed, whatever that was, it may come back, but I doubt it because it was hooked for a bit. We're gonna go salt for a while. Uh, I don't even hope for it. Maybe another one comes in, or maybe a school of salmon. But we'll see how we go. We'll keep keep pushing on. Figured I'd do a quick little review on the. Uh, the Anaconda beach cart, this little weapon here. So I've got esky, tackle bag, bucket full of bait. I've got my GoPro stuff up here, phone, keys, etc. Put a few more things in there if you wanted to. Four wheels, front two wheels swivel. You've got your pull handle up the front, which extends, and then you've got a cool little push handle at the back for moving it around on the beach can withstand 120 kilos but I wouldn't want to pull 120 kilos along the beach the wheels are good but they're not fantastic they're just hard plastic it does come with a canopy as well you just lift these up and then the canopy just slots over the top so if you wanted to put your kid in there or something get them out of the sun it's a little option but um, I got it on special the other day for $99 down from 180 to Anaconda definitely Definitely a game changer for the beach, that's for sure. Trying to get all this gear down here by hand is not easy. Putting it in here makes it real simple. So definitely worth investing in if you're if you're a decent or if you're into beach fishing or even jetty fishing, you want to take stuff down the jetty. I actually bought it because I was in Bustledon to get along the Bustledon jetty, but uh, yeah, no, I'm certainly happy I did buy it because yeah, moving this much gear by hand is not easy. So. Well worth it, 100 bucks, well worth spent. 
well well spent, that's for sure. Alright guys, get on to it. Alright, I think we uh, we might call it a morning. Been down here for just over oh, about three hours now. Had that one fish that we lost unfortunately, that little grey stingray. Other than that it's been real quiet. Uh, might try and come down this afternoon, try for a sunset fish, maybe get some sunset tailor. See how we go, but yeah. A bit disheartening, it could have been a fantastic morning if I'd landed that fish, would have been bloody incredible actually. But that's fishing. Well, I hope you guys learn a little bit about beach rigs and, and you know the gutters and, and finding those deeper holes and drop offs and, and the currents you want to fish. Plenty of burly. Some fresh baits always better. I only had muleys this morning. I was hoping to be able to catch a few whiting and herring, but whatever's out there picking the little the muleys off the hooks are bloody tiny. So that's unfortunate, but that's fishing. I'm gonna pack these two rods up now and uh, head on home for some breakfast. Cheers guys, if you like it, hit subscribe and uh, see you in the next video. Cheers.